Hello and welcome to my world of crochet. My name is Stina and today I'm here with you to do another yarn talk video. And as always, you can't do these yarn talks without a great tea. And for me today, this is um, my uh, black tea that I brought home from Germany when I was in Germany back in September which is the Ettlinger Altstadt Mischung, which is a black flavored tea uh, with a flavor of um, pineapple and a lemon. I do quite enjoy it and I'm trying not to spend it too fast because I don't know when I will be able to get it again. So trying to get it to stretch as far as possible, I guess, while still keeping the taste is a challenge. Anyhow, a few things has been happening since our last yarn talk. And one of the things is that I finally recorded enough um, for the progress of the very short tutorial that I'm now at a phase where I can just start crank out the rounds because I don't need to worry about um, having recorded the right bits and pieces of the actual tutorial. That means, of course, recording for tutorials takes a very, very long time. But we are now actually starting to make progress on this, um, on this very short. And um, the purple color here is slowly getting to the end. So I'm slowly going to paste uh, into blue. Um, and of course, as you know, we are working at the other but outer edge. Um, and I'll just keep adding the rounds until there is basically no more skin on. <laughs> No more skein on the yarn is wrong. No more yarn on this cake. Um, so that's about that's about it. Um, I am working um, when I have some free moments. The good thing is now when I got started on everything and I can just crank out the rounds is that I don't need to think too much because it's just uh, repeating round eight until I'm with 11. Repeat, repeat, repeat until the yarn is gone. Um, what I'm most curious about is, of course, how, how this gradient is going to look on this shawl. So that's the most interesting um, part for me. It's basically how is it really, really going to look when it's done. Um, except for that, as you might have seen, I had a hobby yarn haul last week. Um, and in this hobby yarn haul, I received a prim hook in the size three millimeters, um, just to make sure in case you didn't see the yarn hole, I'll link to it in the description box here down below if you want to watch it. Um, and just to note, I'm not sponsored by Hubby. All these purchases are made by my own money. Um, but yeah, I got this gorgeous prim hook, which is an ergonomic, <laughs> which is an ergonomic hook of three millimeters in size and i actually mainly got it because point one the smallest hook i had from prim was three and a half millimeters and point two um i wanted to use it for crocheting my socks and i'm going to share with you how far we have gotten and it starts to look like i have really really long feet um which is not the case, actually. Um, I, I have a quite normal, I guess, stand-up female size. Um, I have no clue what that would be in um, in the US size, but it's like a Euro 38.5-ish, 9. Kind of depends if I use heels or if I'm in sneakers or whatever. Um, most sneakers I wear size 39. Um, but... Um, I've gotten to the pace where uh, where I'm going to start make room for the heel. Um, and I have to say, I really do like this pattern. It's really, really gorgeous. Um, and I had to read it a few times to kind of understand how the pattern here works. Um, and I've gotten to the conclusion that how you do this is basically um, you at the heel I would not sure if that's the right word for it in English, but the heel cap, and then you kind of crochet down while you decrease. So this heel, because I discussed it with, with one of you fellow guys, how on earth are you gonna do this heel? It's basically 
um i had to um chain 35 and then i had to skip all this lovely pattern here on top and attach it at the other side here um and then do single crochets for the whole round and then you do single crochets in the whole chain so that's kind of where the part i've gotten to so basically what i'm gonna have to do next is to um this would be the opposite side would be to insert the right stitch markers here for the decreases and you will then like slowly decrease for the round so that you will um kind of create the heel and then another thing is that these socks apparently are crocheted with the outside in so once that's done you will have to kind of flip it around um i'm not 100 completely sure how i'm gonna approach this yet because um looking at the size and looking at the pattern i have from brubs is that um i've having a longer foot well i have a shorter foot than the pattern recommends <laughs> um so like when you read like um you have to do this amount of rounds but no more than this amount of centimeters and i'm like I'm at those amount of centimeters, but I'm absolutely not at that amount of rounds. So obviously I have not increased enough stitches around um, to make these numbers fit for, for the next bit where I'm going to insert stitch markers and do the decreases. So I'm going to do a bit of math to try figure out where that would be in this piece of work. Because um, I'm at a pace where I can't really 100% follow the pattern. Um, I did not think that would happen, but that could do to the increased needle size, hook size that I'm using, because I'm using three millimeter instead of a two millimeter hook. Um, I will say that the two millimeter hook would probably have made my piece quite smaller, but um, size wise, it's actually functioning pretty well. Like I took it on, it fits. It even fits like if I take it on and put this behind my heel lengthwise, that's that's the fit of my foot um and also width wise here like here the circumference is also good um so i guess we'll be fine i hope at least so now i'm basically just going to wing it completely <laughs> compared to this pattern i hope it's gonna turn out fine um and, and i'm not completely sure on that part yet but once that's complete and you have finished up the heel and flip the work you're basically going to um go back into the work and insert yarn again and then from this top part here you're going to work up to make the shaft of the sock at least that's far i've gotten on the pattern um and if it's gonna work out yet i don't know but um again we're winging it um an update will follow most definitely next week monday um so yeah um that's that's the curious part um and the last bit is a new project that i've started um which is a project i mentioned a bit that i might wanted to do um and i started it because i thought i would actually do it quicker but I've sp it took more time to to record videos and and other stuff in life is just like you know work is demanding it's time for me and that's cool because money needs to pay the bills. Um, but I started working on a headband and I'm working it in this um, very well-known ice yarns already that I've made um, a scarf from and I made gloves and I made um, a, gar uh, a barret hat. And now I'm working basically on making a headband. Um, it's not there yet. We are still crocheting in the length. Once it's there, um, I'm going to kind of like fold the knot kind of thing into it. Um, and I'm also sharing the pattern to this headband description box down below. I will also make a from start to finish video of this headband, but in another different kind of type of yarn. Um, because I wanted to make a window set from my remaining um, carnival yarns that I have from Hobby. I think I mentioned that in the last yarn talk video um, last week. I think, just a moment, I'll see if I have it, actually. 
it's laying right here. This is um, the yarn I have left. And um, this partially used skein, I do have a bit of lefties here. But the partially used skein plus um, the full skein should be enough to make a pair of gloves and a, and a headband um, for a full linen set for some happy recipient. So that's basically what I wanted to do and um, I wanted to make a from start to finish video of that headband because what I wanted to do is maybe also on video elaborate on how it's put together to create this kind of knot thing um, that you will have on the front part of your head. Um, I haven't really completely done it yet so this is basically getting a hang of the pattern and I do it and then I think maybe I could elaborate and explain on how I do it in that from start to finish video of creating it. That's at least the thinking thought of it. Um, I think that's almost summing it up for now. Um, I have plenty of projects to do but kind of feel it's again running out but it's because most of the things are either wrapped up or just getting started and yeah cool yeah. um i feel i've been productive and yet i don't feel i've really reached much but um i i do think i've been productive at least for um for the time i've had available so that's that's great i'll be still doing quite some crocheting for the next couple of weeks to go um but I already know now that I'm trying not to have too many big projects laying around due to the fact that um, I will be traveling um, in a few weeks and that will give me a week with little, very little time to crochet. Um, and then from Christmas and five weeks ahead, we are basically going to go five weeks to New Zealand um, to visit some family. And I also know that I'm not going to bring any projects with me there because it's just more things to carry with you. And when I'm there, I want to really enjoy my time seeing people and seeing the place and seeing the nature. Um, what I do hope, of course, is when I'm there, maybe I do have time to um, visit a tea store and visit some yarn stores and maybe grab a little bit of footage um, to take with home for you guys, uh, for Yarn Talk with you when I get back. So um, I will go somewhat silent when we get closer to Christmas. Um, and that's not to do with me stopping all this YouTube projects, but simply due to the fact that I will be way more busy um, and not really around to, to do the same amount of radio recording. Um, but I still hope you will hang along and stay with me even though that I'm gonna be a little absent for a period. Um, I will try to give you some updates here and there and I might even see if I make a video or two um, to have preloaded um, to get uploaded while I am gone. Um, though my comments to your comments on my videos might be delayed compared to what they normally are, but I'm sure you can understand that situation. Um, until then, um, I'm going to wish you a very great day and a very great week ahead because it is Monday and a new week has started. So I hope that you're going to have a very crafty time. I know for sure I will because I will at least finish this headband. I will start on my from start to finish video of the new headband from, from the carnival yarn here. And and it's a nice variegated yarn. Um, I made my brilliant in it. Um, and what I also know is that I hope that I'm at least finished enough with this sock that I can maybe show you how it's going to sit on the foot um, next time. Um, and I don't know if I can reach to finish the sock, kind of depends, because the yarn is really thin. Um, it's like, it's not lace, it's kind of, it feels like, it feels like in between a weight one and a weight two. It's a really thin yarn very thin yarn and it kind of you know, like when i work with it for too long i can feel like my fingers cramp and hurt um 
So um, it's, it's quite different than working with the four stranded yarn here. So even though this seems, these strands are thinner, this somehow feels thinner to work with, even though that when you hold them up, they're probably pretty close actually. Um, but of course with the four strands, you have a little bit of air in, um, who knows? Anyhow, what I wanted to say was if you haven't yet done it yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, hit the little bell so you get notified whenever I post new videos, whether these being yarn talks, tutorials, yarn hauls, and much, much more. Um, it was a pleasure sharing with you what I've reached since last week. And I can promise you there is plenty more yarn adventures ahead. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.